Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to an example, another example dealing with symmetry. So this is a pretty popular question that can come up. I've seen it come up on tests and it's one that can confuse students a little bit and it's a little tough to explain so I'm going to do my best. But what they're asking is, if, is uh, f of x plus g of x even, odd, or neither? in each of these cases here. So the first case is if f of x and g of x are both even, if f of x and g of x are both odd, and then if f of x is even and g of x is odd. So in each of these cases, what happens when we add the functions together? So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna erase b and c for now, just to give myself a little bit more room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to introduce a function h of x, which is going to be the sum of f of x plus g of x, like that. Now, if f of x and g of x are both even, what does that mean? Well, if f of x is even, algebraically we know that f of negative x is going to equal f of x, like that, because f of x is even. And then same thing with g of x. If g of x is even, it means that g of negative x is going to equal g of x, like that. And when we're checking whether a function is even, odd, or neither, what do we do? Well, here, that's what we're checking with h of x, right? We're checking if this function is even, odd, or neither, meaning that we're checking if h of x is uh, even, odd, or neither. What we got to do is we got to plug in negative x for this function here and then see what we get. If we get h of negative x equaling h of x, then it's even, or if it equals negative h of x, then it's going to be odd. And then if it's none of these, then it's neither. So let's see what happens. So if h of x equals f of x plus g of x, then if we're plugging in negative x here, then we're plugging in negative x for those x's as well. So we'll have f of negative x plus g of negative x, like that. But notice that f of negative x, we know it's equal to f of x because f of x is even. So we know this is gonna end up being f of x, and then notice g of negative x is g of x. So this is going to end up being g of x as well. And notice that f of x plus g of x is indeed h of x. So we just proved here that h of negative x equals h of x when f of x is even and g of x is even. So in this first case, h of x, or f of x plus g of x, both of them are the same, h of x is going to be even as well, if both of the functions that you're adding are even. Right? So hopefully that made sense. So you can show this through an example. Let's say that we have an even function, let's say x squared, and then we got another even function, let's say uh, 3x to the power of 4 minus 6x squared like that. If we add both of these, let's call it h of x, what's going to happen? We're going to end up having 3x to the 4, then minus 6x squared plus x squared, that would give us minus 5x squared. Notice that all of the exponents stay even. So that's just one of infinite examples that you can show it through, but it's always going to work out. Whenever you got an even function and you're adding another even function, you can actually graph them in Desmos even, you'll see that the sum will always be even as well. It's going to have that symmetry about the, uh, about the y-axis. Okay, so the answer to A is this is going to end up being even if both f of x and g of x are even. Okay, now what about if uh, this is going to be part B? If f of x and g of x are both odd, what's going to happen then when we add two odd functions? Well, if f of x is odd, 
and g of x is odd, that means f of negative x equals negative f of x. And if g of x is odd, it means g of negative x equals negative g of x. Right? Just the um, fundamental symmetry properties here. And so what we can do, same process, is let's figure out what h of negative x is going to be. And h of negative x, if h of x equals f of x plus g of x, h of negative x is going to be f of negative x plus g of negative x. And notice that from here, f of negative x is going to be negative f of x. And then g of negative x is going to be negative g of x, like that, because f of x and g of x are both odd. Right? And then this negative here, it's like plus minus, so this positive just basically turns into a negative. So we've got negative f of x minus g of x. Notice here what we can do is we can factor out a negative from both of these, and what would we end up with in the bracket? f of x plus g of x. Right? Just took that negative, factored it out, and then What's f of x plus g of x equal to? It's equal to h of x. And so what we just showed here is h of negative x equals negative h of x. And because of that, same thing as over here, that means h of x is odd. And we just showed that, proved it right here. So you've got to do this kind of step on the side and then bring those results here into your main proof. And because we got this result, h of x is odd. So if f of x and g of x are both odd and you're adding two odd functions together, then the sum of them is going to be odd as well. And then the final case, so let's do part C. If f of x is even, and then g of x is odd. And it actually doesn't matter which one is which. We could have said f of x is odd and then g of x is even. The point is we're going to be adding an even function and then an odd function. Whichever one you want to label, it doesn't matter. So we said f of x is even. So we know f of negative x is going to equal f of x. And then g of x is odd still, so we still know g negative x is going to equal negative g of x. Okay, so going back to here, what are we going to do? We got to figure out what's h of negative x going to be. Well, f of negative x is f of x, and then g of negative x is negative g of x. Right, these results over here. And notice how f of x minus g of x, that doesn't equal h of x. And it also doesn't equal negative h of x. Because notice if we factor out a negative from here, we'll end up with f of x, or a negative f of x rather, plus g of x. And notice that that doesn't equal that h of x. Right? How we proved the case in part B, because we got this negative now in front of the f of x. If we factor out a negative from both of these, we're going to have a negative in front of that f of x. The sign is going to change. So h of negative x in this case doesn't equal h of x. It doesn't equal negative h of x. And so basically, in this case, h of x is going to be neither. Okay, so if you get a question like this, then get these individual properties on the side and then use those properties for your main proof and see if you can get that h of x, h of negative x to either equal h of x, then it's going to be even, or to equal negative h of x, then it's going to be odd. And then if you can't make them equal one of those, then it's going to be neither. And as I mentioned, you can test these with uh, graphing. So you can go to Desmos and you can take two even functions, any kind of even function you want, add them, 
see what happens with the graph. It's still gonna be symmetric. You can take two odd functions, add them. They're still gonna have point symmetry. And then you can take an even function and an odd function, add it, and then you'll see it's going to be neither of those.